Hey folks, well this isn't something you get to do every day. Today we're going to be trading two wheels for four wheels. We're going to be driving Kawasaki's new KRX 1000 Terex. This is a two-seat sport UTV from the folks at Kawasaki Motors Corporation. Now today we're going to be actually driving on the UTV World Championship race course. The organization is hosting a fun 60 mile poker run. And this poker run is designed for motorsports enthusiasts who want to see what the racing course is like and want to feel and experience the thrill of UTV driving in a non-competition way. So we're gonna hop behind the wheel of this KRX 1000 and have a little bit of fun on four wheels. All right, folks, here it is, Kawasaki's Terex KRX 1000. This is a two-seat sport-orientated UTV from Kawasaki Motors Corporation out of Japan. Now, Kawasaki has been making its Terex UTV since the 2008 model year. And that, back when that vehicle came out, that was made for more general recreation, a little bit of utility. It was a lot smaller in terms of size than, than a modern UTV. Now the KRX 1000 is an additional UTV in Kawasaki's four wheel segment. They still continue to make the Terex 800 for folks that are looking for something that's a little bit less sporty, a little bit more compact to use on smaller trails. These vehicles like the KRX 1000 are an answer to vehicles like that, the Polaris RZR, which is an extreme performance sport UTV. Now, this vehicle rings in at $20,500. $20,500. For that price, you get a vehicle with 31 inch bead lock wheels. Bead lock wheels are nice because it helps keep the tire affixed to the rim. So when you're operating the vehicle on very technical terrain, you don't have to worry about the tire sliding off the rim. This vehicle is powered by a triple nine cc parallel twin eight valve cylinder heads, liquid cooled. This engine configuration is proprietary to the Terex KRX 1000. Now we can look at the engine here. All of these UTVs are rear engine layouts. So the engine's right here. This is the CVT transmission. That is the transmission that puts power back to the rear wheels and the four wheels. This vehicle's all also fitted with a centrifugal clutch. So it goes engine, centrifugal clutch, CV transmission to the tires. Now this engine, as you can see here, is very big. This will never be used in a motorcycle just because of its sheer dimensions. But it's nice that Kawasaki have paid attention to the details. The oil filter is easy to access. The oil sight glass is right there. You can add the engine oil. It's got a big knob so you can actually twist it with your hands. This vehicle also comes with four link rear suspension and independent front suspension. Kawasaki says it's got about 19 inches of front, front suspension travel and I think right around 21 in the back. That's almost double what a dirt bike has, almost double. So quite a lot of wheel travel and movement in this thing. I really like the signature LED headlights. Let's turn this thing on real quick. You just hit the start button. It also has a nice TFT color display. Looks super sick. Doesn't look janky at all. I like that a lot. Let me show you these lights. Let's turn on these top light bar too. Look at those things. Look how sick that vehicle looks like. And rotting after dark, that huge LED light bar is really gonna do a good job of illuminating the trail ahead. These UTVs are so fun because you're able to go 
to places that you can go on your motorcycle, but you can bring a friend. You can bring a cooler with drinks and snacks and you get to experience Mother Nature's glory in a little bit different type of way. I like UTVs. It's a really natural fit for a motorcycle guy who wants to bring a friend, have additional accessories and accoutrement during the ride just to make it more pleasurable. Of course, riding motorcycles is still awesome too, but in a perfect world, you wanna have a UTV and a couple motorcycles. That will really check a lot of boxes for the modern power sport enthusiast. All right, folks, enough talking about this thing. Let's hop into the cockpit and put down some miles. All right, folks, here we are about to start our UTV poker run. And look, a good old fashioned mechanical key. I love it. But this key looks kind of flimsy. For a $20,500 vehicle, this key should look better. This almost looks like a key that would be on a KLR 650 or, or a KLX mini bike. Let's insert the key into the ignition. These vehicle, vehicles have automotive style ignitions. You make sure your foot is on the brake, twist the key, and the engine starts up. Now, unlike a normal automobile, the transmission has no park. It has a high gear, a low gear, neutral, and reverse. We also have a mechanical cable actuated parking brake. Now, the vehicle is in H mode. H stands for high. That is designed for all around forward, forward vehicle movement. Conversely, L is also for forward vehicle movement, but this is a low range setting. This is for when you are going up extremely steep or going down extremely steep. Be on the race course for five miles. And then you're going to see a set of cones on the right hand side. Just go past the cones. Great. I heard there was some confusion out there. Okay. Morning. Pass the cones. Just keep past the cones or you're going to be back here in 30 minutes. Thanks, man. All right, man. Have fun. Thank you. That gentleman is an organizer here for the fun UTV poker rally drive. And he just told us to go past the cones. Some quick, simple directions. We have GPS navigation to keep us from being lost. What? Your lights are on right here. Okay. It's really in the back. How do I turn them off? Okay. That's our buddy Jeremy McGrath right there. He is a multi time Supercross champ and he is an ambassador for Kawasaki Motors Corporation and he's participating in our. UTV Poker Run 2. His KRX 1000 is outfitted with a turbocharger. Jeremy, how do you like that turbo? What? How do you like that turbo? Oh, we're going to give it a run today. He says he's going to give it a run today. Very nice. Back to this vehicle. L is for low range. That is for going up or down steep inclines. It's also a good setting to use if you were crawling rocks or if you had to tow some kind of auxiliary vehicle like some jet skis or a small trailer up or down some obstacle. So low is a lower gear ratio designed for going slow and crawling. Then we have neutral. Neutrals for when you had to tow this vehicle or when you had to roll it back and forth when it's not under its own power and then we we have a reverse now when we put it in reverse just like an automobile this krx 1000 terex has a backup camera how cool is that so now we can see where we are going when we put the vehicle in reverse these vehicles are notoriously hard to see when you are looking behind you but with that backward camera you can see much better all right folks here we go we are on the drive now these 
Terex KRX 1000 UTVs. To operate this vehicle, you need, we are in Arizona, so technically you don't need to be wearing a helmet in this state. But for all intents and purposes, you always want to wear a helmet in these vehicles. Unlike an automobile, there is no fender, federally mandated safety standards or crash testing protocol in these vehicles. So you always want to wear a helmet. Additionally, it's a good idea to wear some gloves and a full sleeve shirt and pant. We're going to let these guys pull ahead of us a little bit and get out of the dust here. Let's put it in four-wheel drive as well. Now we are in four-wheel drive. Now, this vehicle has selectable two and four-wheel drive. You can also lock the front differential if you want to. Let's say you are crawling rocks or going over real aggressive terrain. That front diff lock will allow you to have more control over the vehicle in those settings. Now this Terex KRX 1000 benefits from electronic power steering. Electronic power steering just like an automobile gives a very light steering feel in this vehicle. It's very light, which I like a lot. You immediately notice it when you are moving at parking lot speeds, and this vehicle is very easy to control in those conditions. Now, the great thing about having four wheels under us as opposed to two is we are able to bring all of our doodads and our gadgets gadgets we've got snacks we've got waters we've got some extra clothes in case it gets more chilly while we're riding and it just allows you to bring more stuff yet you still get to experience the thrill of off-road driving or riding in pretty technical terrain as you can see here the terrain is fairly rocky in the Arizona and Southern California deserts and even on a dirt bike this would be a little bit not a little bit aggressive also the great thing about these side-by-sides is because they're automotive based it is easier to be able to understand how to operate these things. For most people, there are millions upon millions upon millions of licensed drivers in the United States. So in theory, they would have some understanding of how to operate this vehicle because it is more automotive based. I am going to slide the seat a little bit forward, guys. This seat has manual adjustment so you can move it fore or aft. I had it a little bit farther back than I thought I would want, so I slid it forward. Now, the ergonomics in this vehicle are, like we said, rather automotive, but in the UTV segment, the KRX 1000 is a little bit less sporty feeling in terms of ergonomics than some of its competitors in the class. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because you sit higher in this vehicle, you have a good view angle. Whether you're going up inclines or down inclines like we just did, your visibility is at a rather high level, which I like. Some of the other vehicles, you are 
sunken in rather low in the cockpit, much like a sports car, which is awesome too, depending on your driving style and the type of terrain you're operating the vehicle on. But this, this big viewport and the fact that we sit up a little bit taller in the seat is not a bad thing at all. All right, folks, we're gonna let these guys get ahead a little bit. And here we go. Now we can see. Kinda, we can see. Now this vehicle is powered by Kawasaki's 999cc parallel twin with eight that ooh this dusty silt is impossible to see through we'll just crawl right through it until we have better view now we have better visibility so this is powered by a parallel twin displacing 1000 cc water-cooled eight valve cylinder head now Kawasaki says this engine is good for right around 116 horsepower at the crankshaft. And the, the power on this, on this Terex KRX 1000, it's very smooth. This is a very easy vehicle to operate. There's no power hit. It almost feels like you're driving or riding a, a just like a smooth four-stroke go-kart that just doesn't have any crazy power hit. It just puts power back to the tires in a real trackable manner. And that's good for a fellow like me who doesn't spend a lot of time operating in this type of vehicle. So it's nice to have a real friendly power band yes but once you lay into that throttle it's got some get up and go this instrument panel right here it's a little bit dusty but it's got the vehicle speed listed prominently we have the transmission position which we are in high. If we were in L, we would not be able to go nearly as quick as we could due to the lower gear ratios that the vehicle would be operating in. The other things like the four-wheel drive designator, that could be a little bit bigger. It's hard to even see if I'm even in four-wheel drive right now. I know I turned this knob from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, but for whatever reason, I can't visually see that indicator to confirm if I am in four-wheel drive. And it doesn't almost even feel like I am because I don't really feel those front tires uh, grabbing the rocks when I give them gas like you would if you were in four-wheel drive. This color TFT is very nice. Now, my Valentino Rossi gloves are not touchpad compatible, so unfortunately I can't control this vehicle with these gloves, so I highly recommend getting a, wearing a pair of gloves that have material on the index figure which is screen compatible. This screen we're in right now shows the vehicle speed engine rpm there's also a gps mode which we can enable by pushing this button which is very neat how neat is that this vehicle comes with a gps with a moving map to help mitigate you getting lost when you're out in on the trail I love exploring the wonder of mother nature behind the wheel of a car like this Terex UTV. Little short. 
shortcut, I think. Race course shortcut. Now this TRX KRX 1000 has 19 inches of front suspension travel and just over 20 out back. And it's delivering a pretty favorable ride. It's always not the best when you're getting jolted around up and down and getting your kidneys pummeled by the jolts of the vehicle, but I am not feeling that. It is actually a really smooth ride. To be fair, this terrain isn't overly technical, nor is it overly fast and wide open like it can be in the desert, but for a recreational ride, with, which is what we're doing right now, the suspension performs pretty good. It's definitely nice and comfortable. Yet, this vehicle still has an adequate level of control and, and directional input when I turn the steering wheel. The steering feels a little bit looser than it would in a in a modern automobile, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad. Now, dimensionally, this car measures 68 inches in width, which is literally splitting the difference between the 60 modern 64 inch cars and the long travel 72 inch cars. And that little bit of extra width helps add stability to the chassis. So when you're going around these sharp turns at speed, the vehicle has less propensity to roll. Rolling and safety, keeping the vehicle on four wheels is a very important thing. These UTVs have had a horrible safety track record with people rolling them and, and hurting themselves due to that type of vehicle condition. And while you can roll any type of vehicle, doesn't matter what it is, even F1 cars can roll, you have greater stability with that few extra inches of wheel track. Conversely, the wheelbase on this vehicle is just under 100 inches and it adds good stability. Oh yes, hill climb. I love hill climbs, guys. Here we go. I love hill climbs. Yes, that was so fun. All right, I think we are in four wheel drive. If we weren't in four wheel drive, I think that hill climb would have been a little bit tough to navigate. Again, I like this viewport of the vehicle. It makes it easy to see. And what a great way to experience Mother Nature than hopping in your UTV with your buddies and everyone can bring a friend and bring stuff and have a good time. What's up, John Rawl? I'm having a great time. Thank you. All right, we're going to put the moving map on real quick. Here we are. As you can see, 84 degrees outside, 9.04 a.m. There's the moving map. We are near Lake Havasu City, Arizona. We have a fuel gauge which keeps tabs on the 10, 10 point something gallon fuel tank. There's also a handy CVT belt temperature gauge that lets you know if your CVT belt is getting too hot. Heat is the thing that kills CVT belts more than anything. So the key to keeping your CVT in good shape and making sure that it goes the distance and doesn't need to be replaced is to keep that thing cool. Our gauge says that the temperature of the belt is low, which is perfect. A nice, subtle design touch. Thank you, Kawasaki. We appreciate you paying attention to the details. Now, 
CVT transmissions are an interesting way of transferring power. CVT stands for constant velocity, so there's always tension being put on that belt. And that helps allow for the instantaneous power that this KRX 1000 is capable of. It also makes for a really easy driving experience. There's no gears to shift. And it's just easy. Almost thought we were lost for a second. I'm like, where are we? And these UTV guided poker run style rides are so fun because the organization sets the course they help ensure that you don't get lost with these handy arrows so you know which way to go if you don't report back by a certain time they know that you are out and something may have happened to you and it's just a lot more safe way to operate a vehicle like this I also like that the tracks of these four-wheel drive vehicles are much deeper and wider than a motorcycle, so it's easier just to follow your buddy and be like, oh, we're going that way. These vehicles also throw a little more dust, so you can just follow the dust tracks and know where to go that way. All right, folks, I am gonna put my head down and get back to driving, no talking. We will catch up with you in a little bit here. Now, just like when you're riding a heavy adventure touring motorcycle off-road, you have to be very careful about where you put the wheels on these vehicles when you're riding off-road. You need to make sure that you stay away from sharp edged rocks if you do have to hit a sharp edged rock you want to make sure you tackle it straight on and not on the edge of the tire or near the sidewall because it's very easy to get a sidewall puncture puncture on these tires yes kawasaki has a heavy rated ply Tire on this vehicle, but still, it's still very easy to puncture the sidewall on these tires. So make sure if you see those sharp rocks, you want to hit them dead on and not on the tire's side. So even though you're in a 1800 some pound vehicle, it actually is quite a bit like riding a big heavy adventure touring bike because if you've ever ridden a big heavy adventure touring bike off-road you'll understand that you have to be very careful with the tires getting a flat can ruin your day and put you behind time schedule wise so don't do that now even though Kawasaki is a Japanese company it has a long history in the United States and these Terex vehicles ever since their first production in 2008 have been built right here in America in Lincoln Nebraska that's right Kawasaki has a US based production facility in Nebraska that is where it puts together its KRX 1000, its jet ski watercraft, and its Kawasaki Mule working UTV. So these vehicles are built right here in America. How cool is that? Kawasaki also stands behind its UTV with a six month warranty. So six month warranty on everything if anything is to fail. It also offers extended warranty options. So if you're someone who really wants to have extra coverage, 
on your vehicle, Kawasaki offers that. But it's important to remember that Kawasaki really prides itself on building high quality vehicles that stand the test of time. It invests very heavily in engineering and durability testing. So when you buy a Kawasaki vehicle, it's going to have to meet much higher durability standards than other UTV, UTV manufacturers that produce vehicles in Mexico and here in the United States. So these vehicles, obviously, they're designed for a life of off-roading and they are always going to be beat up all the time, exposed to rocks, dirt, grit, water, mud, sand. And it's really important to have a vehicle that is, excuse the adage, built for tough. And that's what you get with these Kawasaki Terex UTVs. They are built for tough. All right, folks, we are arriving at the Poker Run Rally Checkpoint. This is where they check us in and make sure we've completed this section. And then we go on to the next section. We have this sticker here. They make a mark on it and that allows them to delineate who has hit this checkpoint. How's it going? Thanks, man. Right. Yep, thank you. It's fun. It's getting better up here. Thanks. Thanks, dude. We will pull in behind our friends and colleagues here. Wait for the Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000 non-competition team to get up here. Now, this vehicle, in addition to have, having manual uh, seat position adjustment forward and back, we also have tilt steering tilt steering which allows you to adjust the way the hand the steering wheel is in your hands i wish this tilt steering also had uh, a function where you could pull the steering wheel back it's not like i have a big stretch to grab the steering wheel but i really like when the steering wheel is close in my hands it would be nice if it had adjustment forward and back other Creature comforts include a 12 volt power port so we can charge our devices. We have a glove box where we have our radio and some waters. There's also some cup holders here. I like that this vehicle comes with a fire extinguisher just in case. We have a low power mode. So let's say you're just getting into UTV driving and you don't want to experience the full force of the parallel twin engine you can put it in low power mode and it offers a more mellow engine power map it's good if you are teaching your kids how to drive or if you've never owned a sport utv and you're looking to just kind of figure out the dynamic of the vehicle you can do it in a more safe and user-friendly manner with that low power setting. I really like how comfortable this vehicle is. The suspension does a nice job of soaking up the bumps and delivering me to where I want to go in a cozy manner. That's our industry friend Scott Bell. He is brothers with the late Mike Bell who was a professional motocross racer back in the older days. And again, that's the fun thing about driving these UTVs is you can bring your whole crew with you and everyone can have fun even if they don't have good ability on motorcycles or maybe they're older and they don't have dexterity they used to when they're younger and riding motorcycles is just too uncomfortable. Hop in the seat of one of these T 
KRX, KRX 1000s, and you don't have to worry about that. More creature comforts come in the form of this map storage pop pocket, another USB power port. I love this big wide rear view mirror does a good job of showing you what's behind this see-through roofs also nice because it lets light into the cabin sometimes with these utvs they it gets so dark in here and you can't see anything and this little bit of light really does a good job of just illuminating the controls and the display this UTV also has the ability to play music. It also has Bluetooth functions. How cool is that? Let's get going. Look at that metrics. It shows the vehicle pitch and roll settings. Love that. I love having data and information shared with me in a very nice and legible way. And this color TFT display does just that. I love how sharp the fonts are and the general crispness of the display resolution. How fun is this? We're going near 40 miles per hour over these big dips and, and small valleys. How neat is that? Get some room so we can get some dust free trail. And let's give her the beans. It is getting the beans. Look how beautiful it is out here in the desert. We can see the lush cactus and pet bush. Oh, that silt is gnarly. There, now we can see it. This like Baja style talcum powder silt clouding our vision. Back to the beauty of the desert. We have gotten some monsoon style rains this past summer which have made for very idyllic conditions here in the des the cactus and the shrubs are happy they got some moisture in them this krx 1000 has a top speed of 68 miles per hour 68 miles per hour is its top speed. It is governed at that speed, so it can't go beyond it. Now, when you're arriving upwards of 50 miles per hour into the 60s, this parallel twin has a nice little boost of power. Kawasaki vehicles are always renowned for their punchy engine feel, and even though the power is is a little bit modest down low once you get this thing spooled up it has a nice little punch it's it's nothing crazy or and it doesn't offer the same smack you in the face level of acceleration as the forced air induction vehicles but still it's enough to put a smile on my face when I was doing some research on this vehicle before, I was kind of skeptical about the parallel twin engine configuration, whether it was gonna have enough power to put a smile on my face, but it does. And because this vehicle achieves a little bit lower top speeds, in a way it's almost just easier. It's easier to wrap your head around the speeds that you can achieve in this Terex. Now everything that goes has to stop and quadruple four disc brakes are incorporated in this KRX 1000. There's a disc brake on every wheel. The front two wheels benefit from a double piston caliper while the rear wheels have single piston calipers. And the braking capability on this Kawasaki, it's nice. I like how the pedal doesn't feel as mushy as it, as I remember it did on the old Terex 800s. It's not gonna be totally sharp, but it's got some bite to it. I also like that the brakes 
when you get into the pedal, the power doesn't ramp up super aggressively. That helps you maximize the traction you have from these 31 inch meets when you are applying the brakes. There is no ABS on this vehicle. It's a full manual braking experience and I think that's just fine. ABS on these vehicles would be very hard to program. Yes, you could program some advanced off-road ABS, but realistically, if you're just smooth with your left foot or right foot, I use my left foot for braking, it isn't a big deal and I still have good vehicle control. God, this is fun just blasting through this open desk. There is some heat in the cockpit. The powertrain does emit some heat. You have to remember the radiator is actually positioned in front of the vehicle, even though the engine is behind. And I definitely feel some heat on my legs and on my feet. It's a pretty mild day at 73 degrees Fahrenheit with low humidity. So the heat isn't overpowering. In fact, if it was a chilly day, I'd probably like that heat. But it's something to note. If it was hotter out, 90, 100 degrees, that cockpit hit heat on my legs and on my feet would definitely get annoying. This CVT with the centrifugal clutch, it has a lot more response than I remember a CVT transmission equipped vehicle having. Those things always had a little bit of a lag. This thing doesn't have a lag anymore. It's much more responsive. I like it. Even the annoying CVT drone doesn't seem to be nearly as loud as I as I remember on the Terex 800. Those things were just so loud and just vacuum cleaner sounding. This has a little bit more pleasing tone. It's still a CVT, so it's not going to sound as good as if you were banging gears in the Tuning Fork brand's offering or Big Red's slick shifting DCT setup, but it is better than I remember. And here we are, folks, in the loose, rocky section and the Terex in four-wheel drive open front diff tackles it without a fuss. We have our two colleagues in front of us also tackling the rock section. Ooh, this is fun. Now, these rocks aren't nearly big enough to necessitate low range, but if it was bigger sized rocks, steeper terrain, I could see how we would want to use a low range. But because the terrain's not too technical, not too rocky, high range, high range transmission mode is just a-okay. Even though the wheel track and the wheel base has grown on this vehicle compared to the Terex of old, it's not too big. I really like the steering and how precise it is to put this side by side where you want on trail. It's also nice riding a side by side because it just doesn't beat you up like a motorcycle. And here we are folks at another poker run stop. Thank you. This is number three, nobody's seen number two. What's that? This is number three, nobody's seen number two. Okay. So don't worry about it, they'll take care of you down there. Thanks man. That gentleman was just giving us an update. We couldn't find stop number two. This is number three. But no one can find stop number two for, no, for some reason. So it's all good. Now, this KRX 1000 does not have a stereo in it. It's got compatibility for a stereo. There's just no speakers. That is available via accessory, from the accessory catalog or via the aftermarket. Let's get back to driving. This sand wash stuff is so fun. 
I love riding in sand washes. It's fun to feel the vehicle be all loose. And then it's also awesome because that sand really sucks down the engine. So you have to be really aggressive with the throttle. And it just feels fun. Well, folks, that was a quick 60 some miles on the UTF World Championship course. We did it in right around three hours with taking water breaks and stopping to look at stuff. Not so bad. Overall, a very comfortable ride and a very easy UTV to drive. If you don't have a lot of experience operating one of these things, that shouldn't hold you back. Power's nice and mellow. Suspension's nice and supple. Car's wide, relatively long. Handles very easily. Let's wrap things up and then call her a day. All right, folks, we just finished up our UTV poker run, and now it's time to play. I'm gonna win big money. Come on, good luck. Draw? Last name, last name. Oh, uh -uh, W A H E E D. At the very end. Right there, Adam. Yep. Go ahead now, psych. Draw? Good one, yep, draw. Great. You've got three clubs, a uh, pair of sevens. Okay. Hold the sevens. Seven, seven. Keep the sevens. Yep. Yep. Come on, get two more. Great. No. Seven, seven, eight. Ace high. Two, five. No, you had a pair. Okay. Not seven, bad. seven, eight high. Nice. Okay, okay. So, oh, sorry. Pair. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not so good at poker, guys. <laughs> Maybe I'll learn one day. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Well, folks, that was a fun morning trading two wheels for four wheels behind the wheel of Kawasaki's Terex KRX 1000. This is a very fun and easy UTV to drive. I like that it takes me to the same places that I can go on my off-road dirt bike, yet I can be more comfortable, I can bring my waters, I can bring my snacks, I can bring my camera gear, and it still gives me a good sensation for someone who wants to ride and experience the thrill of the outdoors. Would I spend $20,500 for the base model? I would definitely consider it. I really like the fact that you can bring a friend along. I like the fact that there's room to bring goodies and that you can go on longer rides than you could maybe on your motorcycle just because of the added comfort and the added fuel capacity. If I was to make this mine, I'd also probably throw on a couple accessories. I really like that light bar. That would work really good for night driving. I'd probably put a stereo in there too because who doesn't like listening to their few favorite tunes when they're out on the trail. All right, folks, that's a wrap from this Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000 review. Make sure to log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my written content lives. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for riding, or I mean driving, with us today.